if you are new to Sunroom, um, I'm hoping that you either attended our workshop last week or you caught up on it in your own time. The main things that you should have done by now is just set up your bio, set your price, maybe add some custom experiences, um, add an automated welcome message and play around with that first post. If you've done all of that, you're in a really good position uh, to take the next steps. If you haven't done that, it's really not that much work at all. Um, I would recommend checking out uh, the session that we ran last week. It is available on YouTube. If you have any problem finding it, just hit us up in Instagram DMs uh, and we will send you the link. But today's session uh, is great for new creators. It's great for existing creators. And I'm just going to whip through uh, how to grow on Sunroom and how to get discovered on Sunroom. There's a little bit of overlap uh, in terms of how you can launch as well. So if you are new to Sunroom, you could also take any of these strategies and use it as like your starting blocks to just get, get up and running. Uh, I would approach it as like a little menu of services, pick what appeals to you and then put your own spin on it. But we've also created another little survey. So Kate, if you just want to shoot that survey out to everyone now, this will just give us a good idea of the kinds of creators that we're currently chatting to. So if you wouldn't mind letting me know, that would be really helpful. Um, and Kate, let me know if there's anything I should be aware of. Well, do I think the poll is pretty much done so we can move on from that. Epic. Okay. All right. Let's get into it. So something that is great for you all to be aware of, you may or may not have heard of this before, but generally in marketing, there is a rule of seven whereby consumers need to have seen something at least seven times before they actually make a purchase. Um, this could be an Instagram ad, a TikTok, a billboard, something in a magazine. They could have seen like a pop-up on their phone. Uh, these are all ways that we're kind of subconsciously consuming information from brands uh, and we're kind of putting it in our back pocket and it's helping us as consumers decide if we're ready or not to commit. So when you think about your sunroom, it's really good to think about it in terms of building trust. I think I mentioned this in the first session that we did last week. Your followers are really trying to understand what is Sunroom? What do you do on Sunroom? What do they gain from that exchange on Sunroom? How much is it? But they're also really trying to work out once I go over there and subscribe to this person, are they going to keep showing up? Is it going to be worth my money? Um, because the, the slight disadvantage that you all have as creators doing this is that word of mouth um, might not really be spreading in the background and working for you because Sunroom is quite a closed community um, and you might be new to Sunroom. So you're building up your membership base. There might not be people out on the streets talking about, oh, hey, yeah, I'm subscribed to Kate on Sunroom. I fucking love that she does A, B and C. So you need to generate that um, initially and start really selling what you're doing. So just remember this, that showing up consistently really helps across your social channels. Um, and honestly, like I have found in my own sunroom journey, the more that I promote and consistently push people over to, to my sunroom, just the more and more my membership base grows. Um, why can't I, there we go. So here are six tactics for growing your member base on Sunroom. I spoke about this last session. Um, this is an amazing way to launch your Sunroom, 
but it is also a ma- an amazing thing to do just periodically every now and then. Um, I honestly would consider maybe doing a sunroom Q&A like once a quarter because you will always have new things to talk about, new testimonials to share. You might have had new people DM you even on Instagram saying like, hey, I love that you're doing this, this and this on sunroom. This isn't what I expected. And a Q&A is a really good way to regurgitate that information back out to people in what we've heard feels like a really organic, authentic, light way to speak about your sunroom. Um, Lily absolutely killed this. And it's always a good idea to just, whenever you're asked a juicy question, like people don't deserve to know what her boob size is for free or if she has a boyfriend for free. So it's cool that she just added her sunroom link. And that's also teaching people, okay, sunroom is a place where I can access this creator on a little bit more of a personal level, maybe they're a bit more vulnerable, maybe they share things that they wouldn't ordinarily share on a public platform. So a Q&A on Instagram is a really amazing way to introduce Sunroom. Um, and it's also making sure that you're actually addressing like content needs or information needs that your followers have. It's a really good idea to weave in answers to these types of questions. What is Sunroom? Why are you joining Sunroom? Like why Sunroom? Why not OnlyFans? Why Sunroom? Why not Instagram subscriptions? Why Sunroom? Why not Patreon? It's good to answer those questions. And if you don't know how to the, how to answer those questions, um, we have actually been working on a content like folder for all of you where we have answered these questions in various different ways. And you could literally just pick the tile up and use it or like copy the text and paste it in your own way. And we will help you answer those questions. However, the why are you on Sunroom is not really a question we can answer for you. And this is a very, very important question to be able to answer because it is going to bring your followers along for the ride. It is going to tug on their heartstrings a little bit. I think the why um, just, yeah, builds allies. So here's a few examples of what whys could be. I've begun to hold back here due to the size and public nature of Instagram. I want to be able to share more like I used to. So I'm setting up a members only space on Sunroom to share X, Y, and Z with you. What else would you like to see? It is something we hear pretty consistently for creators who have started to build a bit more of a bigger following on Instagram or TikTok that they actually feel afraid to show up. Um, in ways that they used to, which is such a shame because that's what brings you the audience in the first place is that relatability and that vulnerability. But it is completely fair for people to then feel a little bit scared because there's just so many eyes on them, so much judgment, random people now now coming to their page, making split-second decisions or, I don't know, whatever their perspectives on someone might be. So people tend to close up a little bit. Um, But even as I'm saying this, I'm sure we can all recognize that's like quite a relatable thing. So this is a really good why. And most people could understand that and be like, hmm, okay, makes sense. I want to go see what she does on Sunroom. Another one is I feel like I have to stick to a niche here. I want to be able to share more X, Y, and Z, but recognize that content isn't for everyone. So I'm setting up a private members only profile for those who are interested. What else would you like to see? This is another thing we see quite a lot that creators feel like they're just expected to do just this one thing or pick a lane. Um, So again, this is really relatable and understandable. So the whys are almost like this impact statement that helps bring people across. And then another one we see a lot is I've become shadow banned and I'm afraid of the inconsistent censorship on this platform. As you all know, I'm constantly having my work removed and I have to dilute my knowledge and expression. I'm joining Sunroom so I can be more open with those that want to engage in this content and support me for a small fee. It would mean so much. What else would you like to see? I think probably like the consistent thing with all three of these examples is they're kind of emotional. um, And I think that is a great way to like pad and package your, your why in. Um, and it just helps you bring people with you. Uh, so really think about your why. Um, if it doesn't, if you don't have your why already, stew on it for a little bit because it will really help you. And um, 
I've actually written an article that is going in our new help center. And I think I've written about eight different whys that I've seen come up probably the most consistently. So we will also circulate the link to that article because it might help um, bring some inspiration. So Q&A, really honing in on your why. And then don't be afraid to just like reinforce that over and over. Like another just 101 of marketing is consistent consistency. Like it's actually, you're, you're doing it right if you feel like a broken record and you are just saying the same thing over and over and over again. That is doing it right. So don't be afraid to consistently reinforce and remind people of your why. So subtly drive your audience over. I'm sure you've seen loads of examples of these. We will often reshare them on our Instagram stories. Um, There are a few different ways you can do this. Obviously, more like spicy, sultry content. You don't really need much text if you're doing something like this. You definitely can add copy, but the spiciness will kind of spark people's curiosity enough and they will come over because they want to see what's like under the emoji or under the line or the story behind the images. Um, Another really great way to do a tease is to start telling a story and literally just cut it off when you get to the punchline or be like in this video, for example, with Lucy Holes, she was about to do a sex toy review and it was like okay well I can't go into the detail I want to go into over here so I'm doing it over on Sunroom but the most important thing with doing these casual stories is just to make sure your link is there to make sure you are storytelling and setting a bit of context Um, if you're doing more of like a knowledge sharing or a story time type post And then if it is more for just behind the scenes or sensual content, I do think just use of emojis and lines um, and things like that is a really good way to just give people a little nudge and move them over to your sunroom. Okay, this is a really, really good one. Um, Posting about your custom experiences. So It's a really good idea, I think I mentioned this last week, to remind people from time to time that custom experiences can actually be purchased by anyone. You do not need to be a member of someone's profile to have access to their custom experiences. Um, I would consider doing something like this really early on in your Sunroom journey because especially if you're struggling a little bit with how to articulate the what on Sunroom, you might be able to come up with your why, but now maybe you're a little bit shy, like maybe it is a bit more sensual and you don't want to be that open about that. Maybe you are telling really juicy personal stories and you're still a little bit scared that like the people you don't want to see those stories are going to come and see those stories. So you feel like you have to be a bit more subtle I would consider using your custom experiences as a way to do that um, and as a way to still just like draw people over. So go into your sunroom and literally just screenshot your custom experiences. The cool thing about custom experiences and the why I, the, the reason why I think promoting them work so well is even though they're not that like super detailed, they're still quite clear what people are gaining. Like resume review, 30-minute mentoring call custom photo advice in a voice note I think the custom photo like depending on where your boundaries are for the people that are wanting spice it's probably still enough of like a hmm what does what do they mean by custom photo to see that and think okay I don't even have to subscribe to work out what that is I can come over click on that and maybe start chatting to this creator in dms to see if this is the kind of space I, I want to show up in as well. Um, another tactic I use from time to time is, and this is really just giving away my secrets, I will say things like, I have new spots available for my mentoring sessions. I always have spots available for my mentoring sessions, but positioning it like that makes it seem like some really sought after, highly booked out thing that I basically have no time for. And then all of a sudden people are like, hmm, okay, she's got more sessions. I better get in quickly. 
So do little things like that. Um, I also love to just show that it actually has worked for people. Um, so if you have testimonials or anything from your custom experiences, that's another really good thing to include. Okay, this is a very good one. Um, share a personal journey or start a series. So you're trying to bring more and more people across, like you're posting on Sunroom, you're showing up on Sunroom, you're consistently doing little story mentions about Sunroom. How are you going to retain people that have now that have now got there? How are you going to stop people from cancelling? And starting a series is one of the most successful ways you can achieve this. People love following a narrative arc, a story arc. Um, so doing like a 30-day challenge, a 60-day challenge, like I'm trying to break a habit. I know it takes 60 days to break a habit. I just broke up with my boyfriend. I'm going to share the journey of me refraining from texting him for 60 days. I'm pretty sure that's a fact. I'm pretty sure it's 60 days to break a habit. Um, so if anyone wants to do that, <laughs> report back. Um, but, but following someone's journey and giving people an idea of the timeline is a really good way to keep people engaged. Um, probably the best retention I ever had on my own sunroom was when I really committed to these series. I did like a career confessions on a Monday and a little lesson on a Friday and it really helped keep me accountable. And it meant that when ideas bubble away in the back of your mind, you can like bookmark them in the notes section of your phone and think, oh yeah, that's that's a good one. I just remembered about that story. Now I can share this as my little lesson next Friday or whatever it is. So think about something that you could potentially commit to over a month or two months or something you could do once a week and bring people along for the ride. So things we've seen creators do with juicy details of their breakups and their healing journey, breast augmentation journeys, career confessions, detailed dating stories. This is such a good one, like worst dates, worst sex, best sex, um, mini workshops on pleasure. People are interested in the intimate details. So have a think about what sorts of intimate things you could share and then maybe like the cadence of how you then deliver that out to your audience um, and how you can capture their attention on that topic over a sustained prolonged period of time. Okay, where am I in this? <clears throat> I can't remember what number I'm up to. Anyway, we're tracking, we're tracking well. So Another thing you could do, um, I used myself as a guinea pig for you all two weeks ago. I love to test things before I tell people if they're worth doing or not. So this is tried and tested and it worked really fucking well. So if you're a new creator on Sunroom, don't do this yet. This is something you could consider doing maybe at the end of your first quarter, so maybe three months in. If things are going well for you, don't do it then. Maybe do it six months in. Um, if you're a current creator, this is something you could do to really just like reboot and re-energize your account. That's why I did it. I started to feel like my account was just, honestly, I started to feel like my account was a little bit too dead because it was feeling like it was mainly dudes who wanted to purchase like spicy stuff from me and DMs. And I'll be real. I love, I love that. I'm like, yep, give me, give me the quick cash. I'm down. But my grid is really much more for the girls. And so I really wanted to just re-engage my like women audience on Instagram and try to get more and more women in um, and just kind of reset the balance in my account to make sure I kept showing up consistently on my grid and I felt like I had the people there that wanted to hear about my holidays and my hardships and work and everything about me. So I ran a sale and I went out to my audience first and said, hey, I'm thinking of running an experiment with my sunroom. A hypothesis that I want to test is that overall prices might be too high, especially because we operate in USD. Most of my followers are Australian as well. Um, if subscription prices were more like buy this creator a coffee 
to support their efforts, would you be more inclined to take a squiz? Um, like 93% of people said yes. I feel like it's obvious they would say yes. I already know the answer to that question. I'm so sure, I'm sure so do all of you, but that's not the point. The point is to validate your own internal thoughts and also ensure that your audience feels really heard and like they're a part of the journey and that you're considering their needs. So doing this kind of thing just will will help you in many different ways. I then um, went back out on my stories and said, like, I've heard you. I won't play this because I don't fully remember what I said. And it might be really long, <laughs> but um, I went out and said, I've heard you. Um, I lowered my price to $2 a month. So I made it super cheap. I said, I've actually made it less than the price of a coffee per month because I want to make this like more accessible, especially to my women followers and the people who are interested in hearing about business. And I got a hundred, over a hundred new members in 24 hours. My account felt, felt so much more alive. Um, I just feel like I've kind of had this reset from this moment. I'm still doing like my spicy stuff and DMs, but like I find that stuff's just always there. So this served a bit of a different purpose. And then the feedback was really good. Um, thank you so much for lowering your sunroom. I've always loved all of your content, but I had to do a big cull and cut back. Um, so glad that you're back. Um, and then another one, some quick user research. This immediately enticed me to subscribe with the $2 a month. I've never paid for any creator's content before, um, even for the people I really love, blah, 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 not willing to go on their Patreon. So Something you could consider is how you package up your membership price and how you communicate it back to people like this, buy this creator a coffee per month. It really helps, I think, just reframe what making this purchase decision is in consumers' minds. Like, oh, okay, I actually love this person. The price of giving them a coffee a month is like nothing. If I wanted to hear about their life, I'd probably be willing to take them out and buy them a coffee to like pick their brain, whatever. So it just meant people were more likely to subscribe. So I kept my price at $2 for a few days and now I've bumped it up to $4 per month. So it's still super low. But what I have noticed is I have just started organically getting more and more members um, and my membership base is now up to I think the highest it's ever been and I've been on Sunroom for nearly two years um, so I'm going to keep my price down at four dollars because I like the fact that clearly people are willing to subscribe without even needing to know me at that price and I'm also noticing people aren't cancelling um, so something that I also it, it's completely up to you. You need to put a price on yourself as a creator. But something I've also noticed in our data is there are a couple of creators who came on and set their price at like $2 a month when we first launched. They got a couple of hundred subscribers. They then stopped using the app and they still have those couple of hundred subscribers because people just don't even notice a subscription price as low as $2 a month. Um, they're much more likely to cull a higher price and I have always said, I think it's like better to get people in the room um, than to have them not in the room in the first place. So just something to consider. Um, you don't have to lower your price and keep it low forever like me. You could just do these um, incremental tests, but just sharing what I noticed. Whoops. Okay. Sorry. Getting discovered on sunroom so you may well you probably all noticed actually oops on the discovery feed there are two little tabs my people which are the people that you've subscribed to and suggested you want to be showing up as a suggested creator so once you have seven make seven paying members your profile trailer and preview posts automatically go into the suggested feed and you will start being served to random people in the Sunroom ecosystem. This is very unique. OnlyFans don't have a discovery feed. Patreon don't have a discovery feed. Basically no other monetization platform has a discovery feed. And there is a reason for that. It is because 
monetization platforms are not social networks. So we don't have algorithms. We don't exist to shoot you out to the masses. So most platforms don't even bother attempting to play this game. We have decided to attempt to play it because we want to help creators, but we don't want creators to depend on this. So that is why we have a rule that you have to reach seven paying members before we show you here, because that tells us you understand we don't have an algorithm. You understand we're not a social network. We're not going to help you go viral. We're not about chasing followers. You've clearly done the work and you brought at least seven people over. You've helped add to our ecosystem. Now we will give back to you as well. And we will show you to other people that have that are already here. Hope that hope that makes sense. Um, I've already been over profile trailers and I'm sure you probably have all done this. This is more for the existing creators on the call. This is just a reminder to update your profile trailer from time to time because it is being shown in the discovery feed. Um, so if it's from like a year and a half ago, maybe refresh it, um, maybe add a new video and just keep it lively and make it seem new and, and interesting, I think is a good thing to be aware of. Um, and I've already been over just using it as a space to sell. So answer the prompts that will actually help you sell to people that may have no idea who you are or what you're about. Okay, this is the probably the most interesting part of what I wanted to go through. And I think it's the last slide. So your profile trailer is obviously, it's automatically going to go in there, but then your preview posts are also going to go in there. The thing to be really, really mindful of is if you go to town on preview posts because you want them to be shown in the discovery feed, you are actually hurting yourself and not doing yourself any favours that sounds really blunt, but I like have to get the message across because if you've then done all these preview posts and these people are seeing them and they're liking them and then they're coming over to your um, profile, they're never going to subscribe because you will have a shitload of free content on your grid. So you have to use preview posts really sparingly. So I just want to show you like a live example. So it sucks that I can't see you all or hear, hear you all, but I'm just going to assume you're following me. So if you all open the Sunroom app right now and I'm going to assume you're not a member of mine, imagine if I was like, and go to my page and just hit subscribe. Um, but no, just go to search and search for me and don't subscribe. Just search for me and land on my page. And you will see on the left, it says I have 87 members only posts and I have 22 preview posts. And it'll look exactly like this screenshot. You'll be able to see exactly what we've got up here. So I'm really bad at maths, but obviously I have... <laughs> way more. I'm, I just can't even do it. I have way more members only posts um, than I do preview posts, but I don't have no preview posts. I still have some. So every now and then I will just do some kind of fresh little tease as a preview post. So most of mine are like bikini pics, but I want to show you the one that actually has made me the most money. Um, it is one, two, three, four, five. It is six rows down. I'm wearing a green hoodie and it is where I've got a little peace sign on my head. And I say the advice I got, which helped me grow my TikTok from 2000 followers to 30,000 in 48 hours and how I think brands can approach TikTok. Um, that is my best ever performing preview post because I put a paywall in it. 
Um, so the thing with preview posts is you can make them 100% free, um, but you can also choose to chop them up and put a paywall at a certain point. So in your own time, I would suggest actually just having a quick look at that green jumper one that I pointed out. And you will notice that I have a full video. I don't know if you can see me, but I've got like a full video where I start to tell this story and I start to tell people how they can grow. And then I've locked it for 50 sunbeams. Um, and this post is constantly recirculating in the discovery feed. And for me, it is just like the gift that keeps on giving because new people see it all the time. They want that information. Uh, they come along, they give me 50 free beam, 50, well, not free. They give me 50 beams to access the next part. And I'm just casually, passively making money off randoms who don't necessarily want to subscribe to my sunroom, but they do want that information about TikTok. So that's something you could consider. And a really sneaky little tip that probably a founder should not give, but it is a good one, is you can play the game by locking your post for 50 free beams, exactly like I did, because we as a company give everyone 50 free sunbeams when they subscribe, when they sign up to Sunroom. So think about it. You've like gone out on your Instagram, you've done all the work, you've brought over a hundred of your followers to Sunroom. They're brand new. We've given them 50 free sunbeams. They've then seen like a killer preview post like this. They're going to be so much more likely to just unlock it because it's not even their money yet. It's like fake money. We just gave them 50 free beams. So a smart thing to keep up your back pocket, keep in your sleeve, up your sleeve, is to lock a preview post for 50 sunbeams because um, it's a really easy amount to get off people. Um, so think about preview posts as an advertisement to sell your sunroom, keep them juicy, keep them intriguing. If you recycle content here you are absolutely shooting yourself in the foot this all has to be like fresh never before seen think about this as like some of your best stuff because this is what people are seeing before they subscribe even this this was me completely setting a trap like yeah I do have loads of new members but I'm going to make that a preview post because I want anyone looking at this to think oh my god she must have so many members so just like it's just a little just cheat it's not really cheating it's just being strategic. I don't know. Anyway, just like set little traps. Um, your preview posts can be really, really powerful. Um, okay, so that's this session. I hope this was helpful. Please feel free to just shoot any questions you've got in that Q&A box and I'll get to it um, at the end now. But next week, next Monday, it is all about how to make money chatting in DMs. So... If you feel like you're new and kind of ready to go, I would honestly like get your posts up on your grid. Um, it is best to launch with as many posts as possible. So the more, the more the merrier. I do think six to eight is a very good starting point because it shows that there's like some depth there. Um, but if you want your profile reviewed before you launch, reach out to us on Instagram and we can come along and review it. Um, and then, yeah, next Monday is all about chatting and making money in DMs. And then the final week is all about quick fire tips. So I will just stop sharing and just head in here. Hmm, really good question. Um, is nudity allowed on the profile trailer? No. Um, a reminder, we only allow topless content as it is. So probably just good for me to reinforce that, but you can't have nudity um, in your profile trailer or in a preview post because, because those posts are put into the discovery feed. That means anyone who downloads Sunroom and starts to have a scroll could see it. And that means that they could see the content before they have said they want to view sensitive content. So it is an Apple rule that you are not allowed to show 
sensitive content before a user has changed their sensitive content toggle and their sensitive content settings. So you are not allowed to put any sensitive content in your trailer or a preview post that always has to be behind a paywall for your members. Do paying members have to pay the paywall or do they get every post for free? Really good question. Members get to access everything. So like my TikTok post, for example, they would never have had to like like to unlock the next part. They always would have just got that. But this, I'd love to know just from the people left on the call, how you feel about this actually. We are currently, we have the designs all done and something we are thinking about building is locked post for members. So you could actually have a bank of like VIP content that even your members had to unlock. Um, Do you like the sound of that? Because if more people like the sound of it, we'll just build it faster. So feel free to just say, like, you like the sound of it. Um, Yes, I think this was a follow-up comment, just like in DMs, unlock, unlock content. It's exactly like that, how you can do like private locked posts in DMs. And that's more of like a one-to-one exchange. Um, it's like that, but it would be more of like a one to many and it would live on your on your grid. Have you seen or would you recommend a creator to use Sunroom in tandem with Substack? Yeah, I think that's an amazing idea um, and we have seen it. I honestly just think like any avenue where you've got an audience and a way to promote um, or a way to just tack Sunroom on as like an extension of what you're doing is so, so smart. And if you're on sub sub stack, you've probably already got this like habitual approach to how you generate content and how you get content out there. So like, it's just all part of that content wheel and wherever you can like tie things in together, then I think that's great. How can we grow on Sunroom without having a large Instagram following? It's hard to get seven members on Sunroom when our follow account on Insta is super low. You do need to have like a base audience. We have, we have, we always reinforce this. As I mentioned, like we're not a social network. So we're not about like getting loads of followers and necessarily like appealing to this new, new audience. There is a bit of that because we've got the discovery feed. Um, but you do have to have brought some people that already know and love you with you. Um, in saying that, like we've also said, you really don't need a big um, Instagram following um, to actually like get started. But you do, you do need to be like generating content that people are engaging with. Like I think that's a really good indicator of do you have an audience already that are willing to pay and want to support you further? Um, if you don't know that yet, perhaps even try to start testing that out on social media. Like TikTok is a fucking, I don't know if I should say that actually, but it's a pretty easy place to start to grow an audience and to get dished out to a gigantic ecosystem of people. Um, So I would consider maybe if you really are like starting from, from the bottom up, I would recommend like playing around on TikTok a bit more and potentially trying to build an audience there because it is, Um, definitely a place where you can build an audience much faster and then think about like converting that audience over to Sunroom. But um, it's hard for me to really be able to answer this question accurately without knowing like what your starting point is on Instagram. Like you might be sitting there with a thousand followers right now and I would, and think that that's low, Um, but that's actually like a great starting point. And like, you would definitely be able to get to seven members, but we've also seen creators. There's a creator on Sunroom right now with a hundred followers on Instagram. Um, And I think she made like two grand on Sunroom last month, but I can't remember, can't remember how many members she has. Um, Kate, I can't um, get Metabase up right now, but do you know how many the Ocean Fairy, how many members she has? I'll come back to you. I'll just have a look now. I'll get back to you on that. Thank you. I'll get back to you on that number because there is a creator right now with a hundred followers on Instagram um, who's doing very well. So it's, po- it's possible. Um, you do just need to have your account set up in the way that we are explaining and educating people on how to get their account set up. 
and be promoting and be consistent. It's about like, I don't think I've ever seen someone really try and it not work on Sunroom. Um, what do you suggest for usernames? Would you keep it consistent with your social media? Absolutely. Um, definitely. That is the easiest way for people to find you. And it's always going to be the people that know you and are like low key under the radar obsessed with you who are going to subscribe first. That's like your foundation. Um, that creator that I was mentioning, she has 17 members. So she has a hundred followers on Instagram and 17 members on Sunroom. So it's possible. Um, I feel like I've already answered this question. That question was just, do you need to have a lot of followers on Instagram to make money on Sunroom? Absolutely not. As I just mentioned, um, how much did the ocean fairy make last month, Kate? She made, blocking my view. She made about 1200 last month. 1200 USD, 1200 USD from a hundred followers converted to make, 17 members make more this month as well yeah it's nuts um amazing just having more people say they love the vip content so that's sick um, okay good question um i've started to set up my profile i have a few posts up i will be adding a few more but once completed how do i get it to go live and no longer locked the app just knows um, as soon as you've shared your link externally, like in your Instagram bio or in a story or wherever in a newsletter, um, the app will know and that little banner will disappear. Um, and then the app will also know once you reach seven members and then you'll go into the discovery feed. But yeah, as soon as you like take your link and put it externally, we start to track a whole, a whole bunch of stuff. Oh, this is such a good idea. Um, this person just said, I have my account set up. I would like to use my sunroom for the behind the scenes content of my photo shoots, create a direction, get ready with me videos, occasional, occasionally more personal videos like journal entries. Is that a good idea? Honestly, that is a great idea. Um, even like if you're comfortable taking photos of your journal entries or like sharing screenshots of the notes section on your phone, like that's so juicy and interesting. Um, but I would honestly just go out on your Instagram and even share exactly that with them right now and just be like, Hey, I'm starting to set my profile up. I'm thinking about doing A, B and C. Like, is there anything else about my life that you're really interested in? And just start bringing them along for the ride. How can I scroll on creators profiles? Is it only through search? So you just um, literally, like if you find someone and search, you could tap on their username and you'd be on their profile and then you can scroll. Of course, most of their content is going to be locked and it's going to be behind the paywall. But I wonder if this might be confusing people. Something that, oh, fuck. I hate it when it does this. Come on. I need like a ring to block. <laughs> ah. Wait, how do I get rid of my background? Mm -mm. How do I get rid of this? <sighs> I'm so bad at this shit. Mm, I have no fucking clue. Does anyone know? <laughs> Does anyone know how you get rid of your background? Uh, okay, I'm going to have to use my words. So if you go onto someone's profile... Under the, if you go into someone's profile, under the part where it says the big button that says membership info, there are actually two tabs. There's a tab that says members only and a tab that says preview post, previews. So if you want to see all those free posts, you would just tap on previews and then you would be able to consume someone's content or just a sample of the content that they have for free. Okay, that one's done, 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 done. Do you have to announce your Sunroom on social for it to get going? Yes. You need a you need to just launch it anywhere because you need a you need to bring your your fans, your supporters. So however you want to bring them is totally up to you. Um social media is definitely the best, most effective way to do this. Instagram for sure has like the best conversion. Uh, but yeah, that's how you, 
Start making money. You're done, done. Okay, amazing. I think I think I've answered every question. Any advice if you have a lot of Instagram followers but have been silent for a while? Been silent for a while. Like silent on Instagram? I don't really know how to answer this question. I would need like a bit more info. Um, I'm, I'm but- assuming like that maybe they haven't posted for a while or like been engaged on their Instagram for a while but maybe have a, a few fo- quite a few followers. I would say that's a fucking great place to start. (laughs) I would say people would be wondering what's been up and if something's been going on and they would probably want to hear hear more from you. So it could be like this rebirth. Um, Like I feel like maybe there's a story there and that's a story that you could tell on Sunroom. I think either way you'll probably need to like open up a little bit on your Instagram first maybe give people a hint at like why you've been a bit quiet. Like maybe that could be your why. And then they would be like, yay, they're back. Um, And then what are they doing on Sunroom? But feel free to DM. I tried to run a Q&A, but no one asked me questions. No, tag us. (laughs) We'll ask them. Silently tag us and we can like plant some Sunroom seeded questions or like some juicy, juicy questions. But I also would say like maybe you need to do a little bit more groundwork with your audience and actually understand like are they the the types that want to engage with you over on Sunroom and what do they want to engage with you on? Um, So maybe take a step back to like what we spoke about in last week's session and start more at like just literally going out on your story saying I'm thinking about starting a Sunroom. I'm thinking about starting, I'm thinking about sharing A, B, and C. How does that sound? What else would you want to see from me? Would you subscribe? Does $3 a month work? Does a coffee a month work? Does $10 a month work? Whatever it is. And maybe just start to have conversations. Oh, someone also just said, you can ask questions in your own stories. I've done this. (laughs) I love that. Yeah, so apparently you can also ask yourself questions. Um, But we can also help you if you need. Okay, I think that is that. So I hope this was helpful. Um, We honestly have some amazing content coming your way. Like our creator hub is fucking great. A lot of useful information. We've also been working on like media for new new creators that you can screenshot and download and actually use on your own stories to help just answer those um standard questions like what is sunroom how is it different those sorts of things uh but we're always here for you so if you need us please just hit us up on instagram dms um i i feel like we're pretty responsive pretty quick so here if you need it and I will see you next week and thank you so much for your time. Bye everyone.